a transmission line is a power system component which is a distributed power uh, parameter component and spans a uh, you know the component uh, essentially is uh, you know spread over a large geographical distance and as a result of which uh, the first treatment of a transmission line typically uh, involves the formulation of equations in terms of partial differential equations. Okay. So, uh, we did this last time a transmission line is effectively modeled by these equations. Uh, they are also called the telegrapher equations and these are a partial uh, set of partial differential equations. Okay. Now, uh, if resistance and uh, the, con uh, the conductance are neglected, I mean they are assumed to be 0. Okay. In such a case, they are normally quite small. In that case, the response of uh, the transmission line is given by the very well known traveling wave equation. Okay. This is of course, with the assumption that r and g are equal to 0 and uh, c small c here is the velocity of light and uh, remember the L and C here are the inductance and capacitance per unit length capital C uh, that is the upper case C and upper case L are in fact, the inductance uh, and capacitance per unit length. Okay. So, this is one of the important uh, equations traveling wave equations. Okay. Uh, now, in this particular lecture, uh, we will uh, continue with our discussion of transmission lines. We were kind of uh, poised at a very interesting uh, discussion in the previous uh, lecture. We continue with that discussion and uh, hopefully by the end of this uh, lecture, we shall come to a fairly uh, usable model of a transmission line not only for uh, high frequency studies, but also for uh, lower frequency study of lower frequency phenomena. Okay. Thereafter, we will go on to the study of uh, prime movers. Okay. So, in this lecture, we will uh, begin with. So, we will do the study of uh, we will continue our discussion of transmission lines and uh, sometime at the end of the course uh, of this lecture, we will also try to uh, I will try to introduce you to uh, prime mover systems. Okay. Now, uh, one of the interesting discussion which uh, we kind of left halfway in the previous lec lecture was uh, the model of a transmission line, okay, the dynamical model of a transmission line. Of course, I have already given you a dynamical model, but it is in terms of partial differential equations and the solution surprisingly for a lossless case is, case is very neat. Okay, The traveling wave equation looks very neat. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to actually uh, you know understand how a transmission line behaves, so you will have to use a partial differential equation solution. Now, we have uh, in our undergraduate years come across this model of a transmission line. This model is a pi equivalent of a transmission line. Okay. This is a pi equivalent of a transmission line, but it is very important to remember that this equivalent using in fact lumped blocks of impedance and susceptance or uh, sorry I should say impedance and admittance are actually valid only for sinusoidal steady state conditions. Okay. So, in fact, if you look at what z bar and y bar mean in these equations, they are in fact impedance and admittance okay. and uh, what you have is gamma here, gamma bar in fact is uh, determined by this. Okay. So, remember that frequency comes in this and the distance also comes in it, but this is essentially a sinusoidal steady state model. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous class, we may be tempted to you know consider this model as you know correct for dynamical for the study of dynamical phenomena as well. The answer is strictly speaking no. Remember that this is a lumped parameter pi equivalent which tells you the correct terminal relationships in case of sinusoidal steady state, but the correct solution for a lossless line in fact is given by these equations and in of course, in the case where r and g are not equal to 0, you would have to find ways of solving the partial differential equations. Okay. You will not get a neat solution like this in case r and g are not equal to 0. Okay. So, this is something which uh, has to be made clear. Interestingly, uh, the partial differential uh, equation the lossless case 
Okay. The solution with the lossless case in fact tells us something about the transmission line which is very neat and nice. In fact, a transmission line using these this solution it can be shown that if V k and V m are the instantaneous voltages at both ends of the line and I m and I k are in fact the currents at both the ends of the line, then you can represent I m as I m is dependent on V m by this equation where Z c is in fact the characteristic impedance. We have discussed what characteristic impedance is. Z c is root of L by c where L and c are in fact inductance and capacitance per unit length. Small c is the velocity of electromagnetic propagation which for um, air is practically equal to the velocity of light. Okay. So, that is uh, 1 upon square root of L c. Okay. Now, what I was getting at is that the current I m can be written down as a function of the current I m at a time period time instant t can be written down as a component which is dependent on the voltage at that end of the line okay, and a current source I m which is in fact dependent on the currents and voltages which exist at the other end of the line T by D by C seconds ago. T minus D by C actually tells you that I m is equal to I k sometime before what I k was sometime before and similarly it is also dependent on what V k was sometime before. So, it depends on what was existing at the other end of the line sometime back. Okay. Similarly, I k can be represented in this way, okay, where uh, I k of t is equal to dependent on V k of t sorry V k of t and the current at the other end of the line. Okay. Uh, it, this I capital I k is in fact, a current source which contains what are known as the history terms. Okay. So, if you look at in fact, the first equation what it tells is the equivalent at one end of the line. Okay. So, if you look at I m okay, at one end of the line, you can see that this equation effectively tells you I m can be obtained by a circuit of this kind. So, all I have done here of course, is represented this equation. I have just represented this equation. Okay. I have just represented this equation by this circuit. So, if you manage to solve this circuit, you know of course, you need to uh, you know define what else is connected to the system, but the point is that if I look at the equations they are effectively you know representative of this circuit okay it's a resistive circuit this is a history term similarly you can obtain ik from this circuit so whatever if you solve this circuit you will get I k. This I m and I k remember capital I m and capital I k are in fact history terms which depend on the currents at the other end of the line. Okay. So, it is a very important uh, thing to note this okay, that uh, these are in fact history terms which tell you about the current at the other end of the line and sometime ago. Okay, that sometime ago is of course, d by c, d is the length of the line divided by c seconds before. Okay. So, in fact, uh, 
it is an interesting uh, point here that uh, the solution of a lossless line in fact comes out to be uh, simply algebraically related uh, to the currents at the other end, but of course, with a time delay it is a pure transport delay. Okay. So, in fact, uh, uh, this in fact is useful if you want to for example, simulate a transmission line. Okay. So, if I tell you uh, you know the conditions which exist at the boundary of a transmission line, the boundaries of a transmission line, you should be able to tell how the system behaves for other instants of time. Okay. So, uh, for example, if you look at this in fact equation, if you call d by c h, okay. so if I call d by c h, okay, where h is uh, you know I can evaluate the values of i m t and i k t at discrete instants of time okay, by using these algebraic equations quite easily. Okay. For example, I could try to understand the behavior of a transmission line for example, which is connected to a voltage source. So, this is our transmission line. I can use this uh, suppose I want to understand how the voltages and currents behave in case okay, I switch on a voltage source at t is equal to 0 okay, and I want to know how this voltage at this end varies and how this voltage here varies under open circuit conditions that is the current at this end is 0 okay, and the voltage here is defined at t is equal to 0 onwards. Okay. With this information, I could evaluate I m okay, and I k at discrete instance of time. In fact, those discrete instance of time are the time required for the wave to travel from one end to the other. Okay. So, this uh, is a very interesting kind of uh, equation that we get, which is of course, uh, not true in case r and g are non zero okay so let me just again repeat what i what i uh, said in case i present to you a circuit which needs to be simulated a transmission line behavior which needs to be simulated okay the dynamic behavior then i can use these equations okay these equations are in fact algebraic equations with a history term okay the history term in fact involves voltages at the other end of the line, voltages and currents at the other end of the line. So, if I tell you the boundary conditions that is the voltage or current conditions at one end of the line and the other end of the line, okay, you should be for all other instants of time okay, be able to tell how the behavior is. In fact, it changes at every uh, h interval of time. Okay. It changes uh, after h a period of h, where h is d by c. Okay. The amount of time it takes for uh, the information to travel from one end to the other. Okay. So, this is one uh, uh, interesting uh, outcome of the traveling wave equation that you can actually simulate a lossless transmission line quite easily. I mean it looks very complicated, but if it is lossless, can simulate it quite easily. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I should uh, mention here is that I am evaluating the currents and voltages at both ends of the line at discrete in, in I can easily obtain it at discrete instants of time okay, uh, because of the nature of the algebraic equations which I am getting. So, this is somewhat different from the discretization the you know kind of uh, thing we were doing for other circuits. For example, if you have got a lumped inductance. Okay. If I discretize it using trapezoidal rule, the, if I discretize the equation L d i by d t is equal to the voltage across a lumped inductor, okay, then I will get I at k plus 1 into h okay, this is the current at the discrete time instant. So, if I have discretized using trapezoidal rule, this is k plus 1 of course, should be inside a back bracket. 
into h divided by h is equal to v k plus 1 into h okay, plus, so this is of course into l plus v of k into h into half. Okay. So, in fact, the discretized equations okay, uh, of for a lumped in inductor using trapezoidal rule okay, is in fact this. Out here also you will notice that the current at the k plus 1 instant is dependent on the current at an earlier instant. Okay. So, this is an interesting thing. So, if you discretize a continuous time lumped parameter equation, okay, again you get basically the answer you get a kind of when you discretize it you get essentially an algebraic equation which relates new value of in this case the current, the new value of the current in terms of the history, the current and voltage history of this circuit. Okay. But remember that this you know uh, dependence on an history term is local in the sense the current at the k plus 1 instant depends on the local current and voltage at the kth instant. Okay. But in a case of a transmission line remember that our current uh, you know at one end of the line at the kth instant depends on the current and voltages at the other end of the line. Okay d by c seconds before. So, this is something which is fixed by the nature that is the length of the circuit as well as the physical parameters that c which is the velocity of light okay, for an overhead line. Okay. Whereas, when you discretize a lumped parameter a lumped parameter device like an inductor okay, lumped inductor you again get an algebraic relationship, but remember that the dependence on the history term or rather the history term is still local. Okay. In case of a transmission line, the current at one end of the line is dependent on the current at the other end of the line the, at a previous time instant and the time instant is really dependent on the distance. Okay. So, whereas here it depends on the time step you have chosen for discretizing this continuous time differential equation. Okay. So, there is a slight difference between uh, what you are getting there and what you are getting here, but it turns out that since this kind of algebraic relationship is obtained for a transmission line directly, you can interface the transmission line equations and the equations obtained by discretization of a continuous time lumped parameters element like inductance okay, and do a simulation. For example, it is not very difficult to do a simulation now because of these facts of a system like this. You have got a transmission line and at the other end you have got a lumped parameter inductor. Okay. So, when you discretize this you will get uh, basically algebraic equations with history terms and uh, of course, the discretization interval is h. Okay. Out here you again get voltage and current at both ends dependent on one another, but of course, there is a delay element they depend on the history terms with uh, you know the history being relevant to what what was the situation d by c seconds before. Okay. So, if actually if I choose h to be a multiple of d by c Okay, or h equal to d by c, it should be easily one should be e easily able to interface the discrete time equations which you get here with the algebraic equations which are given by these which are given here. So, this is an interesting thing in fact, this is the way uh, you know transmission lines are represented in uh, programs uh, called electromagnetic transient programs. So, you, this is how things are done you you have got a transmission line you assume it suppose you assume it is lossless then uh, the 
the currents and voltages at discrete instants of time can be obtained by these algebraic relationships and continuous time uh, systems lump parameter system which are connected to the transmission lines in fact, can be brought to a similar form because of di discretization by some numerical integration method. And in fact, if the h is either a multiple of d by c okay, or equal to d by c this, this becomes even more easier to interface all these equations. Okay. So, just chew upon this. Okay. And uh, you can actually do a simulation of a transmission line connected to a lumped capacitor or lumped inductor and so on. Okay. It is it's not very difficult to do that. Okay. So, only thing is of course, that there is an important assumption here that the line is lossless. So, can you think of some uh, means of uh, you know, kind of taking into consideration uh, you know the losses in the line that is uh, a non-zero r or g. The answer is well, the, the equation which we get the traveling wave equation or this algebraic relationship which we got okay, is true only for r is equal to g is equal to 0. We just cannot use this and if we cannot use this, we cannot use the simple algebraic relationship between the currents and uh, voltages at either end of the line which we have just discussed some time back. Okay. So, if r and g are to be brought into the picture, the best idea would be to consider a lossless line as consisting of a, a lossy line as a consisting of a lossless line plus the effect of the resistance is considered as a separate series resistance which is connected separately outside. Okay. So, this is a lumped resistance plus a lossless line. So, this is what seems to be reasonable a reasonable thing to do. I mean of course, the validity of this approximation needs to be checked out. I mean uh, this is of course, something which would occur to as a nice trick to uh, you know use these algebraic relationships even when the system is a lossy system. So, you consider a lossy transmission line as a lossless transmission line plus the effect of the resistance is considered separately as a lumped element. Okay. So, this is how uh, you would try to simulate or understand the effect dynamical behavior of a transmission line. There is one more small issue which you need to tackle this is something uh, I will not spend a lot of time, but you can just think of in case I want to do a simulation of a transmission line okay, like, like is shown here and the discretization of the lumped element okay, like an inductor which is connected say at one end of the transmission line is done at a time step of h and d by c that is the length of the line divided by the speed or the velocity of propagation is not an integral multiple of h. Okay. In that case, it turns out to be somewhat difficult to interface the algebraic relationships which you get of the transmission line with the algebraic relationship which you get by discretizing the lumped parameter continuous time differential equation okay, with a discretization uh, time interval of h. Okay. So, what one would normally do under that such a circumstance is try to get h to be rather d by c to be an integral multiple of h as close to it as possible. I mean it may not be exactly equal to d by c may not be exactly equal to k by h, but you can make it approximately so. Okay. Alternatively, you would need uh, in case you do not do not uh, you cannot really achieve this what can you do. So, this is something you can uh, think over. Okay. This is left to you to think over uh, what would be a reasonable or uh, you know a satisfying way let me say of handling a situation where d by c is not an integral multiple of h and as a result of which it becomes difficult to interface the algebraic relationships obtained from the uh, traveling wave equation of a transmission line with the discrete time e equations uh, arising due to the uh, use of some numerical integration technique uh, for a lumped element. Okay. So, this is essentially uh, how you would 
you know this is of course a, a particular issue which you may need to tackle but uh, there have been reasonable ways to really solve this problem and i leave this uh, to you to think about okay the next uh, issue is something which i actually left uh, you last uh, in the last lecture was you have got this lumped pi equivalent of a transmission line from uh, sinusoidal steady state analysis. The question is would that lumped parameter you know let me call it a, a model of a transmission line a lumped parameter model of a transmission line obtained from sinusoidal steady state analysis suffice to really simulate or uh, mimic the behavior of a real transmission line that is the question which uh, we would like to answer next. Okay. So, as I uh, you know discussed in the previous class I mean I left you with a problem if you recall what we did last time the problem was this. This is an example from the book uh, by Sauer and Pai where you have got a transmission line which is uh, 100 miles. Okay. It has got these parameters L is uh, 1.5 milli henry per mile, C is 0 0.02 microfarad per mile and uh, you switch on a voltage source which has a source resistance of 10 ohm onto this transmission line which is open circuited at the receiving end. Now, the question which I posed to you was that if I try to simulate or understand the behavior of this transmission line by using the algebraic equations given here okay the algebraic equations given here and see how this system behaves okay in that case how would the response differ in case i took instead a lumped parameter model of a transmission line where the induct this inductance i assume to be l into h remember l is inductance per unit length Okay, L into D sorry and this is C into D by 2 and C into D by 2. C is of course, the capacitance per unit length. Okay. So, the question is that if I use this lumped parameter model of a transmission line and try to find out how this system behaves. In fact, you can uh, analytically get the response or even numerically integrate and obtain the response. Okay how does this system behave as compared to a proper simulation of a lossless line using the traveling wave equation. Okay. So, you use uh, the algebraic equations with history terms okay, which are actually obtained from the traveling wave solution of a transmission line and see how both of them compare. Okay. So, if you do that you get a somewhat surprising result. Okay. So, what is that result? So, if you look at uh, this is actually the response of the transmission line the, the bold what you see as the bold line here which looks a bit like a square wave initially okay, is actually the response obtained from the traveling wave model that is using the traveling wave kind of response of a transmission line okay, that is using the model uh, the algebraic model of a transmission line with history terms okay, as I sometime mentioned sometime back. Okay. Remember that for this particular circuit the receiving end reacts or you will see something happening only after the wave reaches the other end. So, this is what you will get using the you know a, a, the kind of al algebraic equations with history terms which are valid for a lossless transmission line. This is also called Bergeron method. Okay. Okay. Instead, if you use the pi model using lumped parameter that is lumped inductances and capacitances, you get what is seen here as the dashed line. Okay. One of the important uh, differences between the traveling wave response or the detailed response of a 
uh, using the traveling wave model of a transmission line and the lumped parameter response is that the lump parameter response starts immediately after the disturbance is initiated at the sending end. So, you see the effects right away, okay. whereas there is a clear time delay when you consider the traveling wave model. Okay. The traveling wave model of course, is more accurate. So, what you are really uh, although we are talking of a comparison remember that the traveling wave model is actually the more accurate one. Okay. An interesting thing of course, which you see here is that although there is of course, a difference between the traveling wave model and the lumped parameter simulation of the system, there is some similarity too. In fact, if you look at the response, it seems to be some kind of a filtered response. You know, The lumped parameter response is a kind of a more smoother and uh, you can call it a kind of a low frequency part of the response. Okay. So, if you look at it, it is similar, it is not the same of course, but it is similar okay. and in steady state if you of course, if you allow this particular system uh, to settle down. Okay. Remember what is the system we have considered, please have a look at it again. If you look at this again, it is a sinusoidal source switched on to an open circuited line. Okay. So, if you wait for a long enough time, one would expect that the system would reach a sinusoidal steady state. The interesting thing is that if one looks at you know the receiving end voltages after the system is allowed to settle down you will find that in fact both the lumped parameter model as well as the traveling wave model also called the Bergeron method okay, settle down to the same value. Now, why is this so? In fact, this is not surprising at all remember that the pi equivalent is valid, it is valid in fact for the sinusoidal steady state. Okay. So, the traveling wave model is essentially settling down to the same steady state. Okay. So, the as far as the sinusoidal steady state is considered the pi model of a transmission line is in fact correct, in fact there is nothing wrong with it. Okay. Only thing is that the initial part of this transient which we saw an expanded portion in the previous slide, there is some difference. There is some difference in the initial part of the response okay, using a more detailed partial differential equation model as compared to the lumped parameter model. Okay. So, this is what essentially you will be losing out in case you know you choose a lumped parameter kind of model. Now, it is obvious that if you are not interested in the high frequency transients which are seen right at the beginning of this uh, plot, then it appears that you can just as well use the lumped parameter model. Okay. So, if you are not interested in high frequency transients, in fact, it is a good enough approximation to even do dynamical analysis with the lumped parameter model. Okay. But remember the origin of the lumped parameter model, the origin was actually uh, from the two port equivalent under sinusoidal steady state conditions, but you can actually use it uh, if you want to obtain the low frequency behavior of a transmission line. So, it is it's okay to use a pi equivalent model. So, this is what we get from this particular study. What you cannot of course, get from this model is uh, uh, the lumped parameter model is the behavior just after the disturbance. Okay. Then there is a substantial difference. So, this is something which we saw some time back that right at the beginning there is a difference between the responses although the responses are similar they are still different. Okay. Now, uh, going on further in fact, our uh, discussion so far has been uh, restricted to a kind of a single phase line. Okay, a distributed parameter model of a single phase of line and we actually got the traveling equation uh, wave equation for it. The question which uh, we can ask ourselves is if you have got more than one line. Okay, for example, suppose you have got a bipolar line that is the electromagnetic environment consists not only of two lines, but something like this. Two transmission lines okay and the ground okay 
So, the ground also could be a part of the electromagnetic environment, there could be currents for example, in the ground. In such a case, our uh, equations, uh, the equations of a transmission line are in fact, suppose the current through this is I 1 and this is I 2, okay. then you can show that the at any, uh, just like in the previous case, you can write down the equations like these are partial differential equations. Remember that what we are doing different from the previous case is that we have introduced another conducting kind of uh, system into the analysis this is the ground. Okay. So, the electromagnetic environment is slightly different from the previous case where we just had two lines in this universe and nothing else. Okay. Now, we have got V 1 say at a distance x as before this is V 1 this is the local the voltage of this point with respect to ground at this point. Okay. So, one should be very clear about what we mean by this. Similarly, the voltage of the other wire at any point on the other wire with respect to ground locally is V 2. Okay. So, you have got V 1 and V 2 of course, I have shown this slightly tilted. So, you can look at it this way. This is ground. So, this is V 2, this is V 1 and this is I 1 and this is I 2. Okay. And like before, you have got the sending end and the receiving end and so on. So, the equations for V 1, V 2, I 1, I 2, V 1 and V 2 are the voltages with respect to the local ground here are in fact given by, I am sorry, this should be, yeah. So, we will have a matrix here is equal to Just a moment, we will just, yeah. Okay. So, what is different in this case as compared to the next? Remember that V 1 is the voltage of the first at, at a point on the first wire with respect to the local ground, V 2 is the voltage with respect to ground, the local ground for the second wire. I 1 is the current in the first wire, I 2 is the current in the second wire. Okay and uh, you could have in fact current uh, in the ground in fact the ground current in case i1 okay if i1 is not equal to minus i2 in such a case you can have currents to the ground so in some sense what i'm doing here is including the effect of the ground or uh, the electromagnetic environment around these two wires as well so, this is basically the equation which you get and uh, a similar equation exists for the current as well. So, you got L s, L m, these are inductance, you got an inductance matrix. Okay. Is equal to, this is for a lossless case of course. Now, the question is we had uh, considered the equations of a transmission line earlier this is of course, with losses, but there we had just the voltage across the line and the current there is only the current whatever current flowed here was equal to the current which. So, this whatever current suppose there was 1 ampere flowing this direction 1 minus 1 ampere would be flowing in this direction. Okay. So, this was the situation before. Now, you have got the ground with possible current flow through the ground okay, and you have voltages with respect to the ground V 1 and V 2. Okay. So, this is what is different. So, we have got more variables and uh, you also have got a bit of coupling. 
these variables are coupled to each other. Okay. So, how does one uh, solve in such a case? Okay. Th this is actually a, a simple case of how you can use mathematical tools to solve this kind of situation. Now, in fact, with r and g equal to 0, we know the solution of this equation is actually the traveling wave solution. Okay. Can we directly apply this to this situation? The answer is no, we cannot directly apply it because now we have got a coupled set of we have got two sets of equations okay, and each of them is in some sense a vector equation. Okay. So, how do you solve this problem? In such a case, okay, if you have you define the difference voltage as V 1 minus V 2 and the common voltage as V 1 plus V 2 say divided by 2. Similarly, I difference and V common is equal to V I 1 plus I 2 divided by 2. In fact, the common current is in fact proportional to the ground current. Okay. So, if I transform v 1 and v 2 to v diff v com i diff i com. Okay. I can reformulate these equations, this is something I leave for you to do. You can reformulate the equations in i diff i com v diff and v com and one very interesting thing occurs is this is something you can it is very very easy to prove. Okay. So, you have got for example, d i diff by dou t d i com by is equal to you can reformulate the equations in terms of these new variables and the surprising thing is that this is a diagonal matrix in case you use this transformation of variables. In fact, the terms are in fact L s minus L m and here you get L s plus L m 0 0. Okay. Similarly, you will have C s minus C m 0 0 C s plus C m dou V diff. So, what you have essentially is uh, this kind of decoupling takes place between the i diff and i com variables and as a result of which you can take the pair i diff and v diff and v com and i com and essentially since v diff the equations between i diff and v diff are completely decoupled from the equations of V com and I com and the equations in fact are very similar to these ones of course, with R and G equal to 0. You can actually get a traveling wave solution for V diff, I diff, V com and I com separately okay, because there is complete decoupling between these okay, and get the solution for this system as well. So, it is a very interesting thing. Uh, which I have tried to tell you is that you can use transformations, this is basically a linear transformation of variables in order to get decoupling. Okay. Once you get a decoupling, you can get the traveling wave solution for the diff variables and the com variables separately and if you want to get V 1 and V 2 eventually in the end, you just superimpose the solutions, you just add up the solutions uh, you know by using the reverse transformation, I should say add up, use the reverse transformation to get the original variables. Okay. So, it turns out that uh, even in cases where you have got a system, uh, you know you can imagine that if you have got a three phase system. Okay. So, if you have got a three phase system and with ground as well, this is a typical electromagnetic environment which you will see. In fact, you can have clients in close proximity to each other etcetera. It turns out that although there are coupled partial differential equations in the original variables like V a g 
that is the voltage of a phase with respect to the local ground okay you if you if you formulate your equations in that way using the the phase variables with respect to ground the voltages of the phase variables with respect to ground or the individual phase currents you will it will turn out that in fact you will get some kind of coupling but if it's a symmetrical system as in the you know the case which i showed you sometime you had a symmetry cs cm cm cs okay the matrix which uh, related all the original variables was symmetric now if the symmetry uh, if, if the system is symmetric it turns out that some of the transformations we have studied before can be applied to the three phase case and we could actually do a kind of uh, we can get a neat model in terms of the new variables for example you may ask can i apply the dq transformation which i have used for studying a synchronous machine to a tra three phase transmission line the answer is yes you can provided it is a symmetric transmission line okay so if you have got for example a transmission line okay which is which has got parameters like this it could be a lumped parameter uh, representation in which case of course a transmission line becomes a for example if you are studying a transmission line using the lumped parameter approximation we have already discussed this in the beginning of uh, rather some time ago so you will have d i a by d t for a three phase system okay is equal to v a 1 minus v a 2 v b 1 minus v b 2 and v c 1 minus v c 2 and of course, so this is 1 and 2. So, actually v a 1 means the voltage a with respect to the local ground at this end of the transmission line v a 2 is the voltage with respect to the local ground at the other end of the transmission line. So, see this is a lumped lumped parameter model of a transmission line which you suppose I wish to use. Okay. Now, the question which is the limited question we are asking here is not about lumped parameters or distributed parameter lines is whether, but can we get a transformation to make this a decoupled set of equations okay? or rather I can ask you a very more specific question. If I transform I A, I B, I C to I D, I Q and I 0 okay? and V A, V B, V C also to I uh, you know the D Q variables, what will happen of this you know equation. So, what the question is the differential equation in fact will look like this eventually. Okay, where this is nothing but what obtained by applying the transformation of variables. So, what I have done is applied the time variant transformation C p. Do you recall that? The time invariant time variant transformation C p, which is a function of theta, okay, theta is the angular position of a machine. Okay, of course, now the question arises is which machine or there is no machine here, but suppose I take any machine and use its theta and transform this, this set of equations. Okay. In that case you will get basically this matrix will get transformed to this matrix. Okay. 
it in fact turns out to be diagonal. Okay. How will you get it? Basically, I have replaced I a, I b, I c by I d, I q and I 0. Okay. So, uh, what, what you have to do is suppose I call this the L matrix. So, what you have is L d i, this is just written in a compact fashion. Okay. So, I am just writing these equations in a some kind of it is just a compact form of a way of writing these equations. These are all vectors, this is L is a matrix. So, when you transform you will get L, this is C p So, this is what I get. Is this correct? Is it fine? Okay. So, in fact, if you evaluate C p inverse L C p and your L matrix is symmetric, it turns out that this new L that is C p inverse L C p, it turns out to be a diagonal matrix. Okay. So, it is an interesting and nice thing for uh, nice thing to happen in case we did use a DQ transformation uh, using a Parkes transformation of some machine. Okay. Now, is this equation correct? Well, the answer is no, there is an error which we have actually uh, done. So, this is in fact not true. Remember that D of C p into I D Q 0 is will have another component d c p by d t into i d q 0. Okay. C p is also a function of time. So, actually this equation is not correct. So, there is going to be an additional term here which has to come which is in fact this is something you can just try out yourself. It is going to be Okay. So, it is going to be this into this matrix. Okay. So, it is suppose I call this matrix L dash, okay. this will become L dash. So, basically what you will have is this equation. Okay. So, remember that this is because you have to take the derivative of the time varying transformation. Okay. Whenever you are going to rewrite the equations in terms of the d q variable. So, you are going to this get this extra term. So, actually you can in fact write down the equations of a, para, a, a, a transmission line element. Okay. For example, the series reactance of a transmission line in case you are talking in terms of the lumped equivalent. You can even write the partial differential equations in terms of the d q variables. There is nothing uh, you know special about the lumped equivalent here. Okay. So, you can actually get the equations in the d q variable. So, you can actually interface the transmission line equations with eventually a machine equations which are there in the d q variables. This can be done. Okay. So, this is an important point. So, the final equations which you get for the transmission line are in fact can be written down in the d q variables in this form. In fact, one important point which I must emphasize here is that in case this matrix L is not symmetric that is there is some unbalance or asymmetry in all the phases. In such a case, 
applying the dq transformation may not be of will not be of much use okay because you will not get this kind of nice time invariant and diagonal form of the matrix l dash okay so in case your l is not symmetric uh, it is not uh, it's it, it really arises from a unbalanced kind of configuration of the transmission line conductors in such a case dq transformation will not yield you um, a useful set of equations but in case there is symmetry you find that the dq transformation in fact gets you nice decoupled equations in dq okay and nice diagonal form of the inductance matrix okay so this is a, an interesting uh, point here uh, about the dq transformation uh, the, uh, the equations of a transmission line in the dq frame of reference okay now uh, there are a few more uh, things i need to tell you about a transmission line so my earlier promise of introducing you to uh, the prime mover systems will have to wait a little bit okay so in the next class we'll just continue our discussion of a trans there's some remnant discussion about transmission line modeling which will continue and then go on to prime mover systems incidentally uh, in one of the examples we did to uh, show you uh, the behavior of an avr the automatic voltage regulator i did model the interconnection of a generator to an infinite bus by a reactor in fact if a transmission line is quite short it turns out that uh, you know you can model the transmission line for slow frequency transients by a lumped element okay this is what in fact this lecture told you that you could use lumped pi equivalent of a transmission line to even get the dynamical response of the system to a very good approximation if you are not interested in the very fast transients which occur just after the transient is initiated okay so in fact we did uh, we just did show the uh, kind of uh, behavior of the model using a detailed traveling lay wave kind of uh, model as well as a lumped parameter simulation okay so we did actually do that and show you that a lumped parameter model does uh, give you a response which is reasonably okay for slow transients okay so it gives a reasonable dynamical response so uh, you can under certain circumstances uh, depending on what you are really interested in looking at represent a transmission line by a lumped parameter model so that that's what you can take back uh, from this lecture in addition the dq model of a transmission line can also be derived and it yields a neat model of a transmission line in fact which uh, this won't hold true in case you have got an unbalanced parameter kind of transmission line okay the dq model will not be very useful under such circumstances but of course a transmission line which is reasonably long is also transposed so to again a good approximation the system is balanced and you can apply the dq transformation and get a dq model of the transmission line okay so these are the few things which uh, i would like you to take back from this lecture we'll continue a bit about transmission lines in the next lecture and then move on to prime mover systems